At Online Med Ed, we walk you through every topic in detail, so you're ready for the boards and the wards. Dissociative disorders are actually pretty low yield in the sense that you're likely to not actually see one. The incidence is pretty low because it requires a severe and prolonged stressor. But it makes it for a great test question because there are four disorders and they're pretty distinct from one another. So this lesson is about dissociation. And it's actually pretty hard to describe or codify what dissociation is. But everyone has experienced dissociation. And after a long day in the hospital or a really prolonged call, you might be so sleep deprived that you just drive home. And then you show up at home and you're like, well, how did I get here? Right? You obeyed traffic laws, you stopped at the stop sign, and the stoplight took a ride on red. You didn't crash into another car, but you zoned out. You don't remember what you did or how you got home, but you got home. That's normal dissociation. When you get severe, and it causes impairment, it becomes a disorder. So dissociation is going to be the separation of mental functions that are normally connected. That is thought, memory, and identity. Right? It's way easier to identify the disorders by meeting their criteria than really explain dissociation in general. And that's because it doesn't happen very often, usually because dissociation occurs after severe and prolonged stressors. The other diseases we learned about that were stress-related happen around one stressor, around one event. But dissociative disorders, dissociation, usually occur after severe and prolonged stressors. Things like not just being attacked and almost raped, but being sexually violated as a child for multiple years. Right? Being kidnapped and sexually violated. It's going to be prolonged and severe stressors, and the worse the stressor, the more severe, the more likely it is to be complete dissociation versus a little bit of derealization. So what I want you to see is that on stage right, dissociative identity disorder is going to be most severe stressor, most severe disorder, and depersonalization, derealization is going to be least severe stressor, least severe dissociation. So let's get into dissociative disorders in general and then get into each of the disorders. All dissociation disorders are going to be that same thing. And the separation of thought, memory, or identity from each other, but they're both intact, but just don't communicate. And the way you go about diagnosing dissociation is to rule out other things. We used to use the truth serum, Amitol. Amitol interview is now the wrong answer. It actually has no benefit. So I put it up here because it used to be the right answer. Strike that out. But what you want to do, and what the Amitol interview tried to do, was rule out malingering. Right? People who are faking it. The most common cause of dissociation. And you also want to rule out substance abuse. The second most common cause of dissociation. But if you truly have dissociative disorders, the only way to treat it is to deal that initial stressor, and you do that through psychotherapy. And the thing is, there's so few of these disorders that it's sort of in contention. What actually happens? Do identities cross over? Do they switch? Is memory gain or not? And so what I want you to take away from this lesson is this. If you have a non-severe stressor, the person is likely to recover their memory, their thought process, and their identity. And the more severe the stressor, the less likely they are to fully recover. That's dissociation in general. Let's get into each of the individual disorders. The first is dissociative identity disorder. This is multiple personalities. And the way you get this is to have at least two distinct identity states. The idea is something like this. You have some really severe prolonged stressor and the self is experiencing that. And what happens is the psyche creates an additional identity to absorb that trauma so that the primary doesn't experience it. 
But after the stressor is over, that secondary identity exists. Sometimes the primary personality knows about it. Sometimes the identities know about each other. Sometimes they don't. So what you're looking for is two or more distinct identity states. And the way the patient is going to present is very obvious on the test. What you're going to do is break it down into the self, that is what the person themselves experiences, and the other, what other people witness in them. The person is going to go between identity states, and they were created so that the primary self doesn't experience the trauma. So when that additional identity takes over, the person, the primary self, doesn't know what's going on or remember. So what happens is you'll see memory gaps. These are called blackouts. Again, you have to make sure that it's not substance abuse, particularly alcohol, because people act differently and don't remember as a response to alcohol or benzos. They experience blackouts, and they usually have a history of severe trauma. And because dissociative identity disorder is the most severe, they might have other dissociative symptoms. That is everything that's going to follow in this lecture. What other people experience are going to be things called paradoxical behaviors. And the boards love going for sex and drugs, but you have to be careful. If the librarian that's mousy has kinky sex because she likes having kinky sex, even though she's a librarian, that's just her sexual preference. If the mousy librarian doesn't remember doing what she does and she ends up going and sitting with 15 different dudes and doing a bunch of drugs when she's never done that before and doesn't remember and has a history of sexual trauma, dissociative identity disorder. So the Paradoxical behaviors that the boards like to go for is women having changes in sexual preferences and drug use. But then also you might even see an appearance change. That is the facial muscles actually shift as the new identity takes over and the person physically looks different. The thing is dissociation is usually a modifier of another psychiatric diagnosis. So look for dissociative symptoms, whether or not it's dissociative identity disorder or some of the less severe forms, usually related to mood. Dissociative identity disorder, two distinct states, memory gaps, severe trauma, paradoxical behaviors. You need to do psychotherapy so that the identity states identify one another and reconcile to the primary self. That's the most complicated one, but it's the easiest to spot. The memory gaps and paradoxical behaviors are usually overt on the test. Next up is dissociative amnesia. I'm going to write it out. Dissociative amnesia disorder. As the name implies, there's going to be amnesia. In the DSM-4, there are two separate diseases, dissociative amnesia with fugue and without. Now, it's a modifier. It's dissociative amnesia with fugue or without fugue. So if there is no travel but amnesia, that is dissociative amnesia without fugue. And the amnesia is usually of the stressor or the event. And this is a common favorite of cop dramas on TV, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. The woman gets raped and then can't remember the rape. Remembers everything else about her, just not the rapist or the rape itself. But it may also be the loss of everyday occurrences. or routines. That is, the guy can't remember what he likes for coffee at Starbucks, or his name, or his date of birth. Or it may even progress to the entire autobiography. These patients who lose their autobiography, they know how to talk, they know how to do math, but they don't remember who they are. And so generally they adopt new identities wherever they are. If there's no travel, it's dissociative amnesia without fugue. A recent example of this is in the FX series Archer. After Archer's wife is killed by Robot Barry, he goes and becomes Bob's Burgers. The actor voices both Sterling Archer of Isis, the secret agent, and Bob of Bob's Burgers. It's a pun on the two things that he's done, 
but basically he forgets that he was a secret agent and ends up flipping burgers at a diner. But it doesn't go anywhere, so that's dissociative amnesia without fugue. If you have dissociative amnesia with fugue, you can have the same amnesia symptoms, only now there is travel. In the series Breaking Bad, Walter White was actually a malingerer. In response to his cancer diagnosis, he ended up walking around and forgetting who he was, dissociative amnesia with fugue, but really he was trying to evade the police. The classic movie is The Long Kiss Goodnight, and more recently, Jason Bourne, where the characters don't know who they are until they're reactivated. Lastly is depersonalization and derealization. Depersonalization, derealization. Another change from four to five is that you can have either personalization or realization and you have the same disorder. The way I want you to remember this is depersonalization is from the body and derealization is from the environment. This is what you do when you give ketamine as an anesthetic to kids. You don't want to expose them to full-blown general anesthesia, so you give them ketamine. What happens is they have this out-of-body experience, this depersonalization. That is, they are witnessing the procedure happen to their body, but they are out of their body and don't feel it or experience it. And the same thing is true of deja vu. It's not the matrix having a glitch. Deja vu or out of body experience is an example of depersonalization. Derealization is even harder to explain. It's gonna be something like experiencing things as if they're in a dream. Right, so depersonalization is watching yourself as though you're watching a movie of yourself. And derealization is experiencing the things in your environment as though they're unreal or in a dream. Usually what you're looking for is an intact reality testing. That is, they're not psychotic. And depersonalization and derealization usually occur in a non-severe trauma or stressor in an adolescent, right? So something that's relatively severe to the adolescent, got a C on a test, girlfriend broke up with them. That's the non-severe trauma, but relative to the adolescent, it's severe, and all they experience is this out-of-body stuff or experiencing things as though they're in a dream. This is usually a modifier of other diagnoses, whereas dissociative identity disorder is very clearly two distinct identity states, memory gaps, paradoxical behaviors, and amnesia may occur at any level, stressor of the event, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, entire autobiography, Archer, and if there's travel, that is with fugue, Jason Bourne. That is dissociative disorders.